Here we have an exploited view of a Centurion D5 Evo sliding gate motor gearbox system. We have a DC motor which drives the gearbox system. The DC motor is connected via a plastic coupling to the steel worm shaft. The DC motor turns the worm shaft, which in turns turns the main gear. The main gear is connected to the main shaft via a clutch system. The main drive shaft is connected to a pinion gear, which is locked in place by a steel pin and set clip system. This is the main drive shaft of a Centurion D5 Evo sliding gate motor. The bearings have been omitted for illustration purposes. So, let's quickly have a look at it. We have the toothed pinion gear, which is locked in place by, via a steel pin. On the other side, a circ clip and washer is fitted to minimize play on the pinion gear. On the mine drive shaft, we have the clutch system. It's basically a square pin which is constantly under spring tension. And this steel pin locks into the main drive gear. So there. So this plastic pin is to allow you to place the gate motor onto manual. So what happens when this knob is screwed clockwise it starts pushing the plastic pin inwards. The plastic pin is pushing down onto the locking mechanism. There you can see it, which allows you to put the gate motor onto the manual position. And when you unscrew the knob and the motor gate is moved, the pin locks back into place. The two bearings on the main drive shaft are press fitted onto the shaft and now that everything is assembled it's much easier to demonstrate what happens and how the system is placed into the manual position. So watch my finger with a yellow push as the screw is pressed in Pin slots move out and it allows one to move the gate as, as the gate motor is now onto the manual position. Putting the gate motor back in gear is easy. Just unscrew it and move the gate and it will lock into place which means that everything is one unit again. Pinion gear is locked in place via a steel pin 
and a circ clip system. The DOS disk has been pressed into the seal there at the bottom so that it's completely seated. Here you can see all of the seals in place. So this is one unit and it's now easier to fit it as one unit into the plastic base. We are now going to fit the front cover. There's an elevated area here. Make sure that it does not obscure the front cover from going on. So if I were to move it that way, the front cover will not go on. So it needs to be out of the way. You'll see the front cover has got an area where those plugs into. So here we have the gate motor where it is on manual. You can see that I can turn the main shaft, but the main gear obviously spinning. If I unscrew the manual release knob, and I hold the main gear in place, I turn the main drive shaft, clicks in gear, and now it's one system. So screwing it back in until it's seated. So there's no, no need to over tighten the release screw. You can see I'm not using a lot of force. Main gear spinning freely. The bottom bearing of the worm shaft falls into place when fitted. The top bearing needs to be pressed onto the worm gear and it will be then seated. So now the worm gear is placed into position. If you want to take it out, make sure the gate mode is in gear. by turning the main drive shaft. That's how easy it is. So the worm gear is kept in place by this plastic coupling. 
make sure about the orientation of the electrical motor securing bolts it does make a difference just move it into position aligned and secure six toric screws do not over tighten the toric screws everything is just plastic It's now time to fit the electrical motor. It has a coupling system which slides over the half moon on the electric motor. Just like that. Then you have the other half that is pressed down into the worm shaft. the hexagon to make sure that it goes in there fitting the electrical motor one needs to line up the splines of the outside coupling with the splines on the inside coupling. The protruding screws will also hinder you from sliding everything into place because they are secured with plastic screws nuts you can loosen them but it either is a risk that the electrical motor back and front plate doesn't align anymore and it's just a frustration so we keep it in this shape we put it over and we wiggle it into place by fastening the bolts slowly one at a time until the whole motor is seated Keep on screwing the screws in until they are well seated. Do not force them. The base is just plastic. It will strip the base. By slowly turning the screws in of the electrical motor, you will feel that there's not a lot of obstruction and the motor will slide in all the way. Here you can see that the electrical motor is completely seated into its area. After fitting the electrical motor, you can use a test battery to test the system. to make sure that it's free running in order to fit the gate motor pinion gear you need to make sure that the hole in the drive shaft is within the window allowed if the hole is here or on the side there you will have to use a test battery in order to test run the motor which will in turn turn the motor shaft and then it will allow you to fit the pin. So place the pin in. 
Put the pinion gear, get the spatial washer. And then circlip pliers. So what makes the Centurion Gate Motor such a great system? Everything is steel. The worm gear is steel. The main draft shaft is steel. The locking pin is steel. Your pinion gear is steel. That combination is the winning recipe for Centurion Gate Motors success over the years.